Oh, here we go again. Hey everybody, so there hasn't been a whole lot of news coming out in the 3D industry, so I figured I'd show a quick video of what I've done with the camera. I wanted to take another step up from the E1 camera, the Zcam E1 twin 3D camera that I had built before. So this is the E2, so <clears throat> with all cameras, I always tend to look at professional cameras that are old, that I can buy used, that are now cheap. And the Zcam E2 finally got to that zone where it's worth it. So this is basically a no compromise 3D setup. And Zcam from the start with the E1 and the E2 had synchronization capabilities built into the camera. So you really don't have to do a whole lot of complicated stuff. The great thing about this rig is it's far simpler to deal with because everything is pre-built. You don't have to do any wiring. You can just buy stuff and have an unbelievably good 3D camera. So I wanted one that was sort of no compromise cinema camera and this thing basically lives up to that hype. It has a couple slight downsides. The only real compromise you're going to make with this using it as a stereoscopic camera is the closest these things can get together is 90 millimeters separation. So to me, I shoot a lot of outdoors and I tend to shoot 100 millimeter separation anyways because I kind of want a little bit of exaggerated 3D and when you're when the closest object is like 15 feet away, it's totally fine to shoot a little bit hyper stereo, a little bit extra wide. I know the industry wants everything to come out at 65 millimeters, but I think in reality, if you shoot a lot of stuff, you're gonna have to vary the stereo base quite a lot. So this gives you the opportunity to shoot everything I do. I do a lot of outdoor stuff. If I was shooting interviews or very close stuff with people, then I probably wouldn't even bother using it because you really do need to get back down to around 70 millimeters, 65, whatever, when you get real close. Like what by real close, I mean three to six feet, you're really gonna wanna get to normal stereo base. But if you can live without that, you can do everything with this rig. I mean, everything except be tiny. You know, that's the other problem this thing has. It's a big beast of a camera. So when you look at uh, some of the other bigger cameras that have come out there by iZugar or Zcam, I don't even know who makes it, but they did take this thing and crush it into an assembly that is this with a stereo base of uh, 65 I think 65 millimeters and they took this camera so the guts in the way this thing works is the same as that rig but that thing costs like four or five thousand dollars or something so knowing that you can buy these Zcam E2 bodies used they can go for about 750 bucks a piece on eBay and you usually get a bunch of other junk that comes with them it's a no-brainer for me and the key thing about this particular camera is you can't see it on here. I've got some custom battery plates in the way here because I had one of them break the tabs off. But this allows this camera below this plate, there's a switch here that is master slave and independent. And of course I'm using a master slave configuration because this thing was built to handle all that. So you flip it over, you know, master slave and you can control everything with this guy and it's great, it's synced. And you've, the, the other key thing with this rig that's kind of a little bit special is this is a synchronization cable that you can buy from Alvin Cables and it's terrific, it keeps everything super simple. You can get the length you want and everything too. So that's really all you need to do. If you go to eBay, buy two bodies and the lenses is very difficult to find lenses that are gonna work depending on what you're trying to shoot. And that's the beauty of these cameras is you can shoot whatever you want. And, perfectly synchronized 3D. And you know, if you wanna know what's the quality like, it's a Zcam E2, so that's the quality you get. So all the videos, all the reviews you've seen of the Zcam E2, that's this, the only simple thing, and this is always with all these 3D cameras. If they just build them knowing they, they can sync, it's just the same camera, but there's two of them, and they're in perfect sync. That's all you need to know. So I can, I'll try to put maybe some link to some video I've shot in 3D, uh, but it's just it's very good to you know to give you an idea so the the real reason i really like this setup 
and use it for what I like is that you can crank it up to 60 frames per second, effortlessly record everything. You, you know, you can put whatever size external batteries you want on this thing, no problem at all. And uh, it's great to have interchangeable batteries on these cameras because all cameras just go through batteries so quickly. You can just do whatever you want. You can do, it has all kinds of ports for connectivity and Wi-Fi capabilities. There's an app. The app, I don't really like it actually. It doesn't even work on Android very well. So I just, I'm still very much a mechanical person. Uh, you can rig up, of, of course, it has HDMI out on it. You can rig up your own big display and have a gigantic, enormous rig, but I hate big rigs. So this is uh, the basic configuration that I've come up with, and it works great. I'm using two, I think they're um, small rig cages that I chopped right down the middle, and it was the only way to get them very close together. And then I think this is a Zcam NATO rail screwed in with like a zillion screws on the top to keep them locked together. You don't even need to do that if you're like doing studio work where you're not moving the cameras that much. You can just put a simple rig on the bottom. Like this Arca plate is really what's holding these two together on the bottom. You could do that, but it's kind of heavy and it would swing around and flex a little too much. I have uh, another replacement, uh, you know, uh, rig thing here that I'm using on a gimbal. So this rig in this configuration, unfortunately you have to add a counterweight to this corner, which is very heavy, but it's the only way it'll balance on the gimbal, but I'm using a DJI RS3, I'll show you that in a second. And this thing perfectly balances on that. So the great thing about this camera is you can crank up the quality of the bit rate that they record on. So it records on CFast cards. I've got like a one terabyte that one of these rigs that I bought used came with and then I bought another, I don't know what it was, 500 gig card. And these make it easy to run super high bit rates. You can record ProRes, RAW output in a bunch of different formats. Um, they all have, because these cards aren't super big, you can also run a solid state drive off of the USB port and continuously run to that for more storage. But the key thing is you can run very high bit rates. So the majority of the stuff I shoot is really recording in H.265. And you can pick from three different modes of that too, which is great compression. Uh, but all this stuff is just fundamentals about the camera itself. The big advantage of this thing is it all works in 3D with no real issue. When you kick off record, both cameras start. They're frame synchronized. It's, you know, very tight. This is how they were originally designed. So Zcam had an interest in this stuff in the past. They've given up on it like everybody else. So these cameras are also getting older now and there's cheaper, better cameras than this out there. And these things are going for much cheaper and you can usually get them with cages and all that kind of stuff. But mounting them up to be stuck together works great. And the trick with this is finding lenses that are compatible. So this sounds like it'd be easy because it's micro four thirds. And it's not. I mean, I've had, uh, I've got Rokinon 7.5 millimeter lenses and they worked pretty good on the Zcam E1, but they really don't work that good on the E2. For whatever reason, they don't focus nearly as good. And the funny thing about these cameras with Zcam is you can, for each model they sell, you can read what lenses are compatible. And you think, well, aren't any micro four thirds lens compatible? The answer is no. And it's very hard to understand why, and I don't even get it, but they just simply won't work. Some of them do, some don't. What I found is the cheaper Mikey lens, the 7.5 Mikey f2.8, which is what I've got on here, this still gives you a super wide field of view, like equivalent to about like what a GoPro shoots. The difference is that it works better. For whatever reason, I get sharper images edge to edge using these than I do other cameras. And I know it's not the lenses that I'm buying because I buy two of everything. And I also have a, several other Panasonic cameras like the G9 and the GX85 and they work flawlessly on these other cameras, n not so much on the Zcam cameras. I think it's because their flange is a little bit imprecisely built and cameras and lenses when it's paired up that have a really picky position that they have to focus in, they just won't work. But um, so the, I mean, it is hard to figure out which cameras really work in 3D and which ones really don't. The simple answer to this thing is it was built to work synchronized in 3D. So 
The cable is a big deal because the cable that they originally had for the Z-Cam was a big nightmare. This one is way simpler and it's just one cable. If you look at what they thought up for the original cabling between these two cameras, it was a bit crazy. So it's nice that Alvin Cable simplified this and that's where I got this from. It's 70 bucks or something like that for the cable. But uh, these batteries are super cheap that you can get to, to power these things. And fundamentally, it just works. And the big deal about this camera that makes it better than so many of the 3D cameras is really you can just crank up the frame rate to 60 frames a second. And, you know, I'm doing a lot of stuff outdoors, so it's... I really love the ability to get to higher frame rates because when you're doing VR, you just need it. <clears throat> People have headsets on, they get dizzy, they get sick. So the more frames you can crank through, the better. You can go up to 120 frames a second, and there's all a couple of tweaks you can do to, to set it up to do that. That works. And you can do other things like high dynamic range. I fooled with high dynamic range, and I just don't like what it does. For some reason, it doesn't work that great. Or I just don't like it as much, so I shoot a lot of 60 frames per second. But the other thing is you can do any stereoscopic format you want. So the, the trick here is it's just the lenses you buy. And sadly, you have to go through some lenses to figure out a good pairing that works with this camera system. So the lens I found that works if you want to do VR 180 with this thing is the Mikey 3.5 f2.8, I think this one is, yeah. And this gets 180 degrees field of view if you really want it. Um, I don't shoot a lot of VR 180. I think one of the problems with the whole industry now is they think the only thing that should be 3D is VR 180. I think it's a joke because no one ever wanted to shoot anything that wide. I mean, there's a misconception, I think, that when you're in a headset, you need an ultra wide field of view, but honestly, you don't. If you watch people that are watching VR 180, they don't look straight up very often or straight down because you really would look straight up. Those pixels are all wasted. So if you use, if you shoot super wide, which is why I like these lenses, you're still getting the field of view of a GoPro, which is very, very wide. No one ever shot video that wide in the past before VR. Now that there's VR, people think you need to go all the way to 180 degrees. I think it's crazy just from doing a lot of it. I'm like, no, it's the quality takes such a massive hit. You're running four times less pixels in your field of view, you know, per degree, because you have horizontal and vertical, so it's not just double width when you go all the way to 180. You, you know, bring your focal length in quite a bit, and you have four times the pixels, and you still have an ultra-wide field of view that's similar to the very wide field of view that a GoPro shoots. But um, this, I went through other uh, circular fisheye lenses with this camera setup as well, and they didn't work, and that sucks, but that's kind of the deal with this camera system is it's not compatible with a lot of the lenses. And it's not super obvious which ones it is compatible with. And a lot of the ones that are, are these autofocus lenses that have infinity focus, uh, you know, infinity rings to focus. You kind of can't do that. Like with all my rigs, if you look at the focusing points, I've got markings on where the, the it has to be. And because they're super wide, you don't need to touch the focus. Once you put it on the dot, you just leave it there and I have multiple dots because different bodies focus in different places and you can see how different it is like on this lens right here the red dots are this is the E2 the E1 focuses way over there so it's not good I mean this means that there's variability in these the production of these things that's pretty tremendous and that's why some lenses are compatible and some aren't. But when you have an autofocus lens, it can accommodate the difference. And that's why the focus rings on all these cameras have no markings on them because they don't know where the thing's going to focus. It depends on the body you put it on and all that other stuff. And the autofocus systems are so good, it overcomes all that. But when you go to manual focus, like these rigs, you just want to put it in one place to focus, leave it that way, shoot everything with that one focus. So manual lenses typically do work better for these 3D rigs. You kind of don't want to let one of these cameras try to autofocus. It's another thing that'll make you sick when it tries to hunt focus and all that kind of thing. But it works great. I mean, the you can get, of course, 4K. You can do cinema 4K, which is a wider, you know, field of view. And, you know, getting the higher frame rates is a big deal. Also, you can shoot high frame rates at 4x3 resolution. So you're really shooting much, many more pixels than 4K 
The only thing about this is there's a tiny sacrifice in the width of field of view. So if you shoot just normal 4K, if you shoot a tiny bit less of a wide field of view, you can get that four by three aspect ratio. And that's what I really like because it gives you more of the sky, more of the ground. And it's not crazy like VR 180. And it just adds to the pixels that you're capturing. It doesn't have an issue with uh, like VR 180, which gobbles up all your compressing power to, to process the sky and everything. So this whole rig, if you look at the cost of everything, uh, if you want to just get two lenses, the lenses are amazingly cheap for this thing. It's the lenses for this setup that I've got. We're only like 150 bucks a piece, I think, and they're brand new. Uh, the bodies, each one you can get for about 750. The cable's about 70 bucks. Batteries are almost nothing. It's like eight bucks per battery, and I've got several different kinds. Some of them are much bigger. And uh, the cages I got when I bought the system, a lot of guys sell the camera with the cage because they know they're not going back to that camera. So you'll see cages come with the camera quite a bit. And uh, so that didn't cost me anything extra. And I assume people that buy them on eBay are gonna see the same thing. So all in to this rig, it's under $2,000. So uh, this, it depends on what you're really shooting. If you need something portable, obviously this isn't it. <laughs> it's, this thing is pretty big. And I, you know, wanted to kind of cover all the bases with these 3D cameras I got in getting one that has sort of no compromise to image quality. And I shoot a lot with tripod outdoors. And the alternate now that I'm just starting to try out is shooting on a gimbal. And I bought the RS3 gimbal. And thank God, it just barely is balanceable. This thing's heavy and it does balance it. And I have used it and it works. And I'll show you that in one second here. But... If you're shooting something smaller, you know, I've got other rigs that are much smaller. This, these are two GoPro Hero 4s. This is the Mew Pro uh, GoPro setup that I've been fooling with for a long time. And you can get 4K 30 frames per second on this thing. And I have external batteries hooked up that I can plug in. But this is great. I have other videos that go over this, uh, the Mew, Mew Pro. And there's still, you know, you can still find your, these floating around out there, which is the original GoPro Dual Hero. It's a terrific little camera. This uses two Hero 3 Plus Blacks, which go for, I don't know, 50 bucks or 40 bucks these days on eBay. So that's kind of almost nothing. And the back, you can still buy them new for about 200 bucks, I think, here and there. But this is a great rig. It's generally, you're gonna be shooting in 1080p with this rig. And if you go 4K, it only does 15 frames per second. But I'm a little bit surprised how good this even works for given how old this camera is now, pushing 10 something years old. So here this thing is on the gimbal. So this is the G DJI RS3 and you need, I need it anyways, a, a, the small rig base plate that is just simple. It's like an Arca clamp. And that brings the whole rig lower because without that their original plate shoves it up into the sky and there's no way it'll balance. The other thing is this rig is so long this way that you need to counterbalance that with this. I have a fairly massive counterbalance weight here. So this is heavy. But the nice thing about this this rig is the gimbal can comp that can handle heavy weight. So it doesn't seem possible, but this whole thing does manage to balance on this thing. Where's the on switch? I'm still new to this a little bit. So it's kicking everything in. So you can do all the controls and everything. Where's the joystick on this thing? So it'll move. And, uh, and it balances out. So that's pretty amazing that that, that whole thing worked. But uh, it took a little bit of time and fooling with uh, everything just to get it just right. And the two things really is the counterweight and the, the special plate you need on the bottom to get it low enough. And it just fits. It is snug up against the side here and it's on the, the cage is just right there on the edge but uh, it all pretty much works. I mean, with this, of course, with a cinnamon setup like this, you can put your own mics and all that kind of stuff. I'm still messing around with this, the stock microphones on this thing. I've got uh, mic windscreens glued over the, the built-in microphones, which are okay, I guess, but uh, people would do something different. So I'm at the limit of this adjustment here too. It's all the way down. And it just barely fits, but it fits. So I'm really excited about that. And uh, I'm going to do a lot more handheld stuff because that's what I like the most. I've been doing shooting this rig with tripod 
and it's terrific that way. You can really get some amazing stuff. Just super clean image quality because the compressors are not bothered by whatever you push through it. And uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, this big monster, if you're looking at doing any kind of stereoscopic stuff, this is an option. It's big and heavy. It's more like a studio kind of apparatus. It's hard to do handheld, but you could. You can put grips on it and all that kind of stuff and walk around with it. And of course it fits on this gimbal, you know, you could do that. And uh, the key thing is you can pick different lenses. As soon as you get away from these ultra wide focal lengths, you can go to just normal lenses. Like I have another pair, pair of uh, Rokinon 12 millimeter uh, lenses that I also shoot with this, which is equivalent to about 24 millimeters in 35 millimeter form. And they work great, you know, it's, you can kind of pick whatever resolution aspect ratio type of thing you want to do and it's up to you and, and it's 3d so you can do vr 180 you know that like what i was saying before with the circular fisheye lens but uh this rig's just no compromise so if you're looking for that no compromise at all solution this would be the way to go maybe you know i have my other e1 system here still that i use for other things it's more it's smaller more portable but it's another option so Hopefully this, someone's digging around trying to find another step up from all these other 3D rigs. This is probably the best one. It's the best one I've found anyways.